Okay, we're going to continue to look at the distribution of sample means, and we're still going to continue to work with a normal distribution. Because it's a normal, because the underlying distribution is normal, we'll be able to calculate uh, sample. Uh, we'll be able to calculate the probabilities even if our sample size is one, or basically if it's less than thirty. So the Wechsler Adult Intelligence Scale is a common IQ test for adults. Um, the distribution of the scores for persons over 16 is approximately normal. So they told us it's normal with a mean of 100 and a standard deviation of 15. So here we go. We have 100 is our mean. Our standard deviation is 15. And we want to know the probability 123 or higher. So Z equals X minus mu over sigma, because they said, what's the probability of randomly chosen individual? So in other words, a sample size of one. So we want the probability is greater than 123. So 123 minus our mean of 100 divided by 15, always write the Z score and we get 0.0626. And I could have done that through the stats test. I could have done that a couple of ways through the stats test, Z test. And we had a mean of 100, a standard deviation of 15, and we want another probability 123, and we had a sample of size one. So we end up with 1.533, and the probability is about 6%. All right, so there's about a 6% chance that um, someone would end up with then a randomly selected individual would have a 123 or higher. Next thing, what is the shape of the distribution of sample means along with the mean and standard deviation of a sample random sample? Well, they told us the underlying population is normal. And because the underlying population is normal, the distribution will be normal, all right? Now, if the underlying population had been skewed, the, under, the distribution of the means for a sample of less than 30 would not have been normal, okay? But in this case, it already is normal, so it stays normal. And we'll have a mean of 100, and the distribution of sample means as the, this, the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. Standard deviation of x bar is the standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of n. So in this case, we had a standard deviation of 15 divided by the square root of six, so that would be it. So then the next thing is, is what's the probability of a simple random sample of six having a average score of 123 or higher? So we're asking about the average, which is the X bars. And so one thing I wanna point out here, this is exactly the same problem as we just did up in part A, except our sample size went from a sample of size one to a uh, sample of size six. So if I'm drawing my picture, it's gonna be the same picture, but it's probably gonna end up being a little bit taller. This is 100 and this is 123. And my standard deviation is going to equal, or the standard deviation of X bar is going to be uh, the 15 divided by the square root of six. So going through, I've plugged in 123 minus 100, 15 divided by six, the square root of six. I can go to stats test, Z test, and change my sample size to six and calculate. All right, and we end up getting 0 0.00086. So having an, a group who had an average of 123 or higher, much smaller probability, less, like I said, we have four, four zeros, and anytime we have four zeros, I say approximately zero, right? So much less, we went from a 6% chance uh, to a very, very small probability. Part D, a simple random sample of 40 was taken. What is the shape of the distribution of the 40 test scores along with the mean and standard deviation? Tricky, tricky question. Be careful about this. This is asking about the distribution of test scores. So this is not asking about the distribution of the means. This is, so this is scores or values versus the mean. 
The mean would be normal was the standard deviation um, divided by the square root of n. The scores actually follow the underlying distribution. So the underlying distribution will be normal, but the mean will be 100 and the standard deviation will still be the original 15 because we're talking about the scores, the individual scores as opposed to the means. There's a big difference. So look, make sure you're talking about the means before you divide by the square root of n. All right, you can only use the standard deviation of x bar. You can only use this if we're talking about the distribution of means. Here we're talking about the distribution of the individual values. So what is the probability of simple random sample of nine people have a score between 105 and 125? So my drawing is going to look like this. And by the way, unfortunately, there's not a really good way to go about this on the calculator, especially with what you have to show for college board. All right, so 105 to 125. Well, both those scores are above. So this is 105 and this is 125. And we're looking for that shaded region, all right? So we're looking for the shaded region in between. So in that case, I'm going to have to do two. I'm going to have to use this formula because there was probably a simple random have an average. There is that mean. So I'm not talking about individual values. So I'm not talking about individuals. I'm talking about the average. So I have to use this formula. And I plugged in. And usually it helps to start with a larger value. So 125 minus 100. And there's the standard deviation divided by the square, um, the square root of n. I got to give my both of my z scores, all right? So yeah, I'm sorry, you're going to have to do this twice. My experience is, my experience is normal CDF is easier to use in this case. So anytime I have a lower in an upper bound, I prefer to use normal CDF. So in this case, second VARs normal CDF, lower bound happens to be 105, upper bound 125, upper bound 125, mean was 100, standard deviation happened to be 15, and we get point, oops, well that doesn't look good, second bars, normal, Oh, standard deviation is not 15. Standard deviation is 15 divided by, and we had a sample size of nine. And so if, and normally it's not gonna be a pretty number. So I divide it by nine and then raise that to the half power like that. And I get 0.1586, all right? Do not forget like I just did to divide by the square root of the sample size. Okay, so real quickly, in summation, if we are talking about the individual values, individual values will be follow the under population, underlying population and will have a, the mean of the population and the standard deviation of the population. If we are talking about the distribution of means and distribution of x bars, so the distribution of the averages, the mean will still be the mean, but the standard deviation of x bar will be the standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Please make that know that difference. All right. Thank you. Hope that helped.